welcome to the brand new season of Babylon Vamba. We're here in the slightly lower, slightly greener level of hell, where the bricks are some, for some reason slightly smaller. But we're in a new place and we're, we're happy to be here doing our first show in, in, a, in a long time. And uh, I know I've just been hard at work trying to just tidy up and cozy up our little corner of, of hell down here. Um, and Dad, I, I haven't seen you this, this whole time. What, what have you been up to? Well, since the last season, I've been doing a lot of downhill skiing. I took a, a couple ballet classes. And I started riding a motorcycle. Wow, that sounds really exciting. Wait a minute. How, how did you, as a disembodied skull, do any of these things? You'll just have to use your imagination. Creepy. Anyway, before we go any further, if this is your first time joining us, Babylon with Vampa is the show where I, Vampa Delombra, and you've, you've already met my co-host, Dead McMahon, we invite unsuspecting victims to our lovely lair down here in hell, and we talk to them about their creative endeavors and the things they do to brighten up Earth just a little bit, since it's way more miserable down there than it is in hell, um, as most of you know. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome to this brand new season of Babylon with Vampa, Miles Delu. Hi everybody, thanks Hi. for having me. Of course, thanks for coming down to the uh, dungeon here in our little cozy corner of hell. I this... love a layer. Yeah, yeah, the uh, delicious seven <laughs> layers of hell. Um, <laughs> So, Miles, you were telling me that you um, are a stand-up comedian. Um, how, uh, tell me about that. Tell me about your, uh, I guess, briefly, your career as a stand-up. Stand-up comedy is very hard. A lot of people do it just to, like, get their voices heard, mm -hmm. and that's what therapy is for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know why I started, I got like peer pressured into it one night at uh, a friend's apartment at, with a bunch of lamps and a table. And I didn't think the table was going to hold me because mm -hmm. this was like a, a apartment in midtown Detroit back when there were no street lights on Cass Avenue. Uh, and it was a little spooky. Um, and I was hooked. My mm -hmm. friends then forced me to go to an open mic and like try. And that, I mean... Without their support, mm -hmm. I don't think I ever would have done it. Uh, I ended up hosting an open mic at a coffee shop from that point on. This is like 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, shoot, just like going, going, going. Um, the big deal when you first start doing comedy is like getting booked on Max Bar in Lansing. And in 2016, uh, Max was a dump, like a dump bar. And... They always packed it out, and there were always people there. There was a lady and her husband, and they brought a fake dog, mm -hmm. uh, and they sat front row, and it was like a quintessential part of being like a Detroit, not even Detroit, just a Michigan comedian. Uh, was to like have the ex ex experience of the dog. Uh, oh, I well, just to do that room was oh, okay. something else. The dog was always a plus in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. Uh, you knew it was going to be a good show mm -hmm. uh, when they showed up. And, you know, you do showcases and you work your way up to, like, opening. And I've done the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase now, uh, like, twice a year for the past, like, three years. Um, I open at the Independent Comedy Club inside Planet Ant mm -hmm. quite often as well. Uh, it's really rewarding and fun. And you not only get to learn more about, like, people who are also trying to be comedians, mm -hmm. but just people in general like you see so many points of view like going up there and just opening their mouth and talking it's in, it's insane the different comedians points yeah of view. yeah like yeah. uh there's just people and things and views you never thought of before that you'll hear at an open <laughs> new way bar monday night i mean that open <laughs> mic goes from seven o'clock at night until one thirty in the morning 
Paul, yeah. I've known for a long time. We used to actually run a, a showcase out of the same coffee shop. I started my open mic cat. Mm-hmm. And I don't, God bless that guy. I don't know how he does it every Monday for the last, I couldn't tell you how many years. The man's a saint. Is I, it Paul P- Pipitone? Pipitone, yep. Yeah, I've heard of him. The yeah. Italian stallion, yeah. <laughs> um, so how long do does it, is it? They go from seven to one, so how long is everyone set? He does kind of like a, I don't want to say like it's biased in any way, but mm-hmm. it's based on how long you've been doing it. There are people mm-hmm. who drop in that are headliners, like Josh Adams will come in. Like, that guy's going to do 15 minutes if Paul, mm-hmm. you know, if Paul's going to let him, let it, like, why not? Uh, there are some people who are new, they're going to go up late, they're going to do five minutes, and yeah. that's it. Like, And to be honest, I've been in New York, I've done open mics there, five minutes is a godsend. Like, five minutes is a long time. New York City, you get two minutes, you wait three hours, and then you get 30 seconds. Like, it's, <laughs> is it worth it? Uh, wow. Yeah, so, it, it, you know, I'll usually get around seven to ten, mm-hmm. and that's enough for a bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for a bar. Yeah, I can see that. So, um, how? Okay, so this is this is like a personal thing. When I when I think about um, like myself doing stand up, mm-hmm. the um, what holds me back is the idea of like completely dying out there and not like getting a really bad audience. So tell me about like a really bad time and how did you handle that? It was November eighth, twenty twenty. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were running for president, right? This is that mm-hmm. year? Uh, no, I'm sorry. This is 2016. Can you cut this? Uh, <laughs> it was. It was election day 2016, and uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were running against each other for president. And I was booked at this, like, uh, Clinton Township, if you don't know, that's, oh. like, pretty right, pretty right-leaning. Uh, it was a cigar bar. And nobody there wanted to see stand-up comedy. Not a, not a one. And not only that, but I was still pretty new to comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, and not one of these old motherfuckers wanted to listen to me. <laughs> not one. Not one. I had one joke about Xanax, and that was the only joke they laughed at. <laughs> and, I mean, not one person was like, on our side at all. And we also didn't have, like, a mic stand, which is, like, mm-hmm. a quintessential, you know, stand-up comedy thing. Like, yeah. okay, whatever. I could put the mic in the stand. I'm done. I walk off. But we didn't have one of those. Nobody's listening. I'm, like, I'm really dying. Like, not a person has laughed. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I voted for Hillary. And I have to walk the mic off the stage <laughs> while I'm getting booed off because all these people were Donald Trump supporters. Oh so it happens. It, yeah. It only gets better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I figure, like, in a case like that, it's like, and it probably most cases, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's not, I think, the takeaway. For anyone who's thinking about doing it, and myself, who, like I said, I've, I've thought about it. It's like, it's not you, it's the room. Usually. Unless, I mean, unless you're, like, being a racist piece of shit. But right. But usually yeah. it's, it's just not your crowd. I yeah. mean, everybody needs a laugh. That has really changed my perception of stand-up comedy. Mm-hmm. Because there are people who I don't like. I don't care for it. Their jokes, in my opinion, are gross and not funny. But, like, the VFW Hall needs a comedian. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, that's yeah. an audience that needs to laugh, too. And there are people who just make their bread and butter doing that. And, like, let them. Because everybody needs to laugh. It's not you, me. It's everyone. And that really is, like, help me feel better if I ever bomb. Yeah. If you want to try it, do it. It's worth it. I mean, really take the class. If not, I mean, a class, not the class. There's not one. There's multiple, even around Mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And it'll just change your life, really. Just, like, writing jokes will really help your mental health, too. Because 
yeah, like I said earlier, everybody needs somebody to talk to and like. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you just need to write, you know, write stuff down. And yeah. You don't need to talk necessarily, just write it down. Yeah, that's interesting because yeah, everyone has the innate need to to feel heard. So um, that's a that's a really interesting way to get a unique voice, your unique voice, heard. Yeah, exactly. And you have like this captive audience, and you got the, you have the microphone and. Oh yeah, if they're there for you, man. Yeah. If that if the audience is on board, like a comedy club on a Saturday night early show sold out, that audience like laughing with you. I mean, mm-hmm. there's it's a high. Yeah, there's nothing like it. Yeah, and that's great too because in that type of audience, they want to laugh. There it they're is. They're there to laugh. There it so, is. Yeah. You have to really say something to like lose an audience like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can imagine. I. Uh, I haven't done the stand-up thing, but, you know, with uh, writing skits and everything uh, and movies, I've I've seen that, you know. So if they're there, if they're there to laugh, they're going to... Oh, yeah. They're going to get it. They're laugh. Yeah. Um, so that kind of leads me into, I guess, your other area of expertise, which is writing, which you were talking about. You mentioned that you're, you were interested in writing television. Yeah, that's uh, that was like in high school, one of the first things I wanted to do. And it still is like the goal. The writer's strike right now is um, <laughs> a little disheartening. It's, uh, yeah, it you know? Is, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you know. And that's where I, start, I started writing like, teleplays and things like that Mm -hmm. uh, in high school. And then I kind of put it down and did stand-up for a while. Mm -hmm. And now I'm doing it again. Uh, Two years ago, I auditioned... Was it two years ago? 2021, yeah. I auditioned for the Planet Ant Farm team to do the original one-act writing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Not class, but program. And I got in. And that's... It was a lot more than just writing when I got in it's you a direct your own show you assistant direct somebody else's show Mm -hmm. you help market and you help produce another show as well and uh i mean that has helped exponentially just to like be around all these other creative people who have that same like goal in mind of putting up a show that Mm -hmm. they've written you know yeah that's really priceless to be around that type of energy oh yeah there's nothing i mean nothing like it Mm -hmm. truly um so I started out 2022 by directing a show my friend Nick had wrote called Dirty Dishes. And following that, the show I wrote uh, singularly and ended up directing with Parker Hammond, assistant directing, uh, was called A Day at the Cafe. And that was like my first, I mean, that was my baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, it went up on Planet Ant Memorial Weekend of 2022. And uh, there's no other feeling than, like, seeing something you've written go up. I mean, it's just, like, truly a, a vision to, to witness. Yeah. Yeah. So that was your, you did the, uh, the farm team origin, one, act, one act, and then the other one was, like, your, on your own. Uh, the, dr- the one I directed. The Day at the Cafe. Yeah, a Day at the Cafe was my uh, farm team show. Oh, okay. And then the play my friend Nick had written, I had assist, uh, not assistant, uh, I directed that, that was our own, like, project that we had put up oh, through okay. Planet Ant. I see, I see. And, uh, I had assistant directed prior, November 2021 was Parker Hammond's Toilet Time. Mm-hmm. He wrote all of those, it was a sketch show rather mm-hmm. than a one act, which is, I mean, a feat in itself. Sketch mm-hmm. shows, as you know, I'm sure, sketch mm-hmm. shows are... They are so high energy, and, like, you have to be on the ball, and once you get those jokes going, man, it's hot. Yeah, it is. I loved doing that so much. I'm sure. That is, like, one of my favorite things in the world is doing a sketch show. It's so silly. I can't wait to do another one. (laughs) Yeah, I bet. It is. It is. It's, like, again, it's, like, all these things, they're, like, a high, and that's, I think, why we all keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. So now we're at the point where I have now, I'm in my sophomoric phase. <laughs> <laughs> You're a season Cut it. pro. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> gross. Uh, <laughs> gross. That was so serious. I hate it. Uh, I've co-written uh, with my buddy Ken Witzko, uh, the show that goes up in June at Planet Ant called Women Who Drink. 
And it's about six female stand-up comedians who are playing a heightened version of themselves, four of whom are really uh, friends, and they walk into this bar with uh, the tender and her, one of her patrons. And that's kind of where this whole thing takes place. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a coming-of-age adult friendship tale. Um it is a lot of learning about myself in the writing process uh, and also other people. You know, you hear all of these voices are based off of an actual person. So I don't want to say it was like kind of research, but you do have to like watch your friends perform and yeah, take that into account when you like write these bits. It was a lot of work and it was a lot of fun <laughs> to write. And I'm really excited. I... I'm in it, which is another big, scary thing for me. Not that I'm new to that. I've acted in several things before, especially at Planet Ant. Mm -hmm. Uh, But to play this, I was just saying it yesterday, to play this heightened version of myself, I wrote all of these lines as I would say it and why I can't remember them. (laughs) I couldn't tell you. Like, it's so me that I'm forgetting that, you know? Because it's like, oh, that's actually... What I would say, yeah, I guess I know why I wrote that now. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you've written, so you're, you're acting lines that you've written yourself. Um, is this the first time that you've done that? Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it. I would not do it again. Uh, not just because uh, I could do, you know, it's, use those for stand-up jokes at this point. I would love, I love the character. Mm-hmm. Um I love thinking about who this person is and what universe they live in and like X Y Z of this mm-hmm. you know like a like a writing process. But it's a char- you know I'm figuring out a character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what I miss more or less about this show. But I love I mean I love playing myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's been a journey. It's three of their, uh, so half of the cast, it's their first time doing a play. So it's been work, you know, it's a lot of fun, but it's still like, we all have to like kind of work together to make sure like everyone's comfortable and, um, like it's projected, you know, it's something you don't think about when you have a microphone right in your hand, Yeah, yeah. but when you don't, and it is jarring, not for, I would say anyone in our cast, but just for a person who's like so used to having something else in front of them to just like. Hello, I'm act- I'm acting now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had that like a little bit of that experience secondhand watching when I was doing the clown cabaret. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a few of the the people who were doing clowns were um, uh, musicians, and they were like, "Well, I'm used to being on stage with like my instrument, but not just as as this like character." And uh, yeah, I, I could see that being. Just it, a very, it's very almost like a not even the same it's animal not, at all. You're not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not the same thing. It's and it's not a comfort really of having like a micro you know, because that's not really comfort, you know? <laughs> it's like yeah. oh oh, I can hear myself and it's very loud now. Um Yeah. But when you take that away even, you're like you want to just be this, like, small, where when you're on stage and you have no mic, you ha- I mean, you have to be mm-hmm. hollering. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's been a lot of fun. I love working with these girls. And Parker, too. Uh- <laughs> yeah, Parker's great. <laughs> you're in rehearsal right now for this, right? Yeah, I go later this afternoon. Cool. Yeah. And how, how many, like, where are you in the rehearsal process? So we open in, a, you know, we open in June, mm-hmm. so... June 2nd, right? 2nd, 3rd, 9th, and 10th. So we're almost there. Plan it in. Yeah. We're almost to the finish line. It's mm-hmm. the part where, uh, as a director, my favorite part. It's when you're running and running and you're getting all of these beats and mm-hmm. bits and you're, like, polishing the show. And today's going to be one of the big, like, we're running top to bottom. Everybody strap in. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. And that's... Like the best part, really, because then you can kind of get to the nitty gritty. No scripts in your hands. You're like, I'm sure Parker should be like, why did you do that? I'm gonna be like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. So you know, I'm forgetting something. Yeah. yeah, somebody will inevitably. But it's oh, 
when you get to be like, well, would your character really do that? And the actor has to actually stop and think and answer honestly. That's mm-hmm. such a good part of being a director. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, when you're right. When you can get the script out of your hand, you know, like, the, the ba- they know the, the lines and everything. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, how are we going to do it now? Yeah. I agree. Ugh, so good. And then it's, that's when you find the, a lot more of the funny, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm at the point, as a writer, and again, like, you're asking how I feel about writing things I'm going to say. Uh, I'm at the point where I'm like, I don't think this is funny. I don't think anything I've written is ever funny, because, mm-hmm. we you know, we just keep hearing it, and we haven't seen it all together yeah. just yet. And I think today is going to really, I'm going to be like, wow, we did write a show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I know you get when you really get into it, you really get lost in the weeds, and you can't like see it anymore. And you're like, wait, does this, does this even make sense? Is this like, yeah, I, right. I know I get like that. And then you take a break, you step back, you look at it, and you're like, okay, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, <laughs> we have an, an amazing cast of women, mm-hmm. and again, that's probably one of my favorite parts. Is I love these ladies. Mm-hmm. Everyone has their own really diverse view and voice Mm -hmm. and it's been a lot of fun to kind of explore that with them yeah because at the end of the day whatever I or Ken wrote together if that's not what they would really say what's the point you know what is Mm -hmm. what was the point of doing this in the first place Mm -hmm. so when they add like little jokes in here and there and Parker it's like just laugh you know as a director he's just laughing you're like this is so you know it's so heartwarming yeah and fun. It's been really the most fun project I've worked on. Not to say I haven't worked my little bagussy off on it. I'm tired. Yeah. But it's really, I can't wait for everyone to see. That's how you know it's going to be good, though, when you're this tired. Yeah. About it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Parker seems like, you know, from working with him, a type of director who really likes to let the, uh, like, actors be really creative, too. And I, I love that because when you get really good, funny I mean, these are stand-up comedians. Yeah. So it's like they they know what they're doing. You're gonna trust them when it when if you give them freedom to change dialogue and there stuff. There it is. When yeah. I first started working on this project and like telling people about it, mm-hmm. a lot of people were like, "Who's directing?" And then I go, "My buddy Parker Hammond," and they're like, "You put a man in charge of directing a show called Women Who Drink, and you have an all the rest of." Pretty much the rest of the group, yeah. uh, minus a few, is you know female presenting. So it was just like, I need somebody who's gonna get the job done that mm-hmm. I trust, who's got this creative process that I can vibe with, who's mm-hmm. also again like you said, he lets those actors like have their own creative flow, and I as an actor like that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, especially in this sense. Again, it's all women. Pl- playing themselves in a heightened sense Mm -hmm. there there wasn't a better choice you know uh it's been a lot of fun and I'm glad he agreed to do it yeah he's great to work with and and personally so it's like you know if you gel with him yeah that I could see people making that like saying that it is so like I I know and like I would honestly I didn't like think that but I probably would have if I didn't have already like worked with Parker right I would have said the same thing. Yeah, but oh, you having a man direct? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's not like all. I, I wasn't calling it an all female production. The title right. is just women who drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I honestly, I get picky about this stuff too. So I do get it. But, I, I <laughs> oh, believe but me. But it's a lesson, though. But I have. But at the same time, there's. I feel like a method for my madness, mm-hmm. and I. You have to come see the show to find out. Really, yeah, yeah. I totally, I will. Um, it's June second, third, and then this week after that, what is that? Ninth and tenth. Ninth and tenth. Um, so briefly, would you like to tell us a little bit about some of the other comedians who are in there? Absolutely. So let's start with the the big kahunas. We got Melanie Hearn and Kara Karasi. They're They've been around, out of, like, the cast, I guess. They've been doing this the longest alongside myself. Uh, They really are two of the funniest, most 
I think, diverse set of women we could have chosen. Kara's sober, so it's really funny to see her play, like, the very drunk character in a Mm -hmm. way. Um, And then Melanie's the bartender, and, like, this is her bar completely. It's just been so fun to kind of let her loose and, like, tell her jokes on stage because Mm -hmm. she's just hilarious. We have Emma Stevenson, Grace Gunn, and Patty Rooney following. Uh, They're all semi-new to that. They're a few years in uh, collectively. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, But they've all been doing it a few years. And, I mean, they all... Emma's, like, this quieter, but she's, I mean, funny. You're like, wow, I'd... Not in a bad way. (laughs) It's like, I would not have expected that to come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Um... Grace is also sober, so it is interesting to have her alongside as well. Um, And she has, I mean, some of these jokes about her addictions that are like, I'm glad, you know, you're still here and, like, making jokes and having a good time. And, like, I'm all here for everyone's sobriety, you know? Mm -hmm. And Patty Rooney has been doing improv for a very long time as well as, um, now she's doing stand-up. This is like her first year. A little, She's been doing it a little more than a year. But she's one of my favorite people to like work with. We've road dog together to Indiana to do our buddy Neil Meyer's show. That guy rocks. Bloomington, uh, Indiana is a really cool city. And I'm like really lucky I got to go with Patty. She's been become one of my very good friends. And I'm just... Cool. I'm just so lucky. Uh, really, like, to have all of these women who, there's no drama. It's just, like, let's work and are serious about it. You know, women can be catty. So, I, you know, it's skeptical yeah. being like, are we sure we want to all fight all the time? <laughs> no, everyone's been really cool and on top of things. And they should be really proud of themselves. That's awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah. Um, so out of all of these creative and, you know, little endeavors that you've dipped into, you have stand-up community, your, your main thing is stand-up, and then you've also, you've produced, been producing this. Yeah, I've been producing Women Who Drink. Writing, acting, what, what is the one that lessens your human torment the most? That's a great question. I think it would be directing. Uh, writing is cathartic in a way. Mm-hmm. Acting is um, a lot of pressure on myself because that's the one where you really you have to take the time. Not that you don't for directing, mm-hmm. but you have to take the time. You have to know that script like inside and out, Wor- you know, verbatim. Whereas directing, you have to know the show inside and out, but. There's a little leeway into being like, I don't know this word for word, but here's what I know emotion by emotion. Right. And uh, I didn't want to direct this show. I was like, I'm in it. I am going to probably produce it. I don't want to be in charge of who goes where because it is such an emotional thing for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, like, And music and lights and sound. And when I have a vision, I will fully admit this. When I have a vision, that's... I will... I will be so annoying until I achieve it. It's not fun. It really... It's really not. I just need open communication to be like, stop thinking like this. (laughs) Yeah. Stop. Uh, (laughs) But when you're directing, you do get most of that control, and a lot of people trust you to follow your own vision in that sense. Mm -hmm. And it's... Really, probably my favorite. Yeah, there's nothing like it. You can act your face off and, like, work very hard in that sense, but I don't think there's any greater joy than being the one who gets to kind of sit the back and watch everyone else kind of enjoy it, too. Yeah. It's so, I mean, it's so much fun. I, I agree with you. I'm it's work. To be honest. It's work. Uh, yeah. It's all work, you know? Yeah. It's It's fun work but there's no other reason like it brings you so much joy there's no other reason to do it you know I'm not making a million dollars uh yeah. no mm-hmm. nobody is around here right. so <laughs> why not do something that makes you happy 100 percent 
you know. Do you think? Do you ever see yourself in the future, um, directing yourself, or is that? I think that would be fun. I, and it's. Oh, you, I hate to admit it. I don't like watching myself very mm-hmm. much. Uh, I do it because you have you have to to get better, and you have to listen to yourself, especially in a stand up comedian sense. Mm-hmm. And I would love to drag myself because I am very silly, and I know. If I have a vision, I know, again, I want to achieve it. But I think I would be very, I would be very hard on myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I would like to. It it would be something that I would have to get comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can see that. That's, um, I've directed myself a, a number of times, and it feels a little bit like you don't have a safety net. Because it's like, you're the one who is... You're the one who's directing you, but you, you're inside you. So yeah, you right, like, you can't be like, all right, so here's what I want you to think about. Um, as an actor, here's your motivation, yeah. and you're like, um, well, I have all the keys in here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can't, like, see myself, and so I'm like, wait, can I just, like, break into two people so I can see what I, like, look like right now? Like, what does this face look like, you know, like? Oh, it, yeah. It's, Hold <laughs> on, let's do another one. Hold on, let's do another one. And then you do a completely different face. Yeah. And then I'll do like what you said. Well, I'll I'll, I'll wrote it, but I'm like, wait, I, what it what was it? I am like, oh, isn't that such a stupid feeling? I <laughs> I know if I'm the one who's acting, it's gonna be like ten takes. If it's anyone else, I'm like, this is gonna be a quick shoot. If it's me, I'm like, okay, we have to I like plan an extra like twenty minutes for me to fuck up a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know that about yourself, though. I mean. That's the big thing is at least you know yourself. Yeah, my goal is always to uh, make sure I don't have a role in, in my productions. <laughs> but I will if I have to because it needs to get done. I like just being the guy, you know, on the outside. Yeah. Don't let my opinion matter. Or do. That's... <laughs> <sighs> so the other item... On your, uh, I guess, repertoire is your social media director for the Detroit Women of Comedy Fest. Oh, yeah. Boy, howdy. May 19th, 20th. It's going to be crazy. I don't know if this is going to go out before then. Uh, we'll try. Yeah, I think it will. Even if it doesn't, Detroit Women of Comedy Festival is one of, I think, the best festivals in Metro Detroit for comedy because it is one of the only ones where it is like... Uh, female identifying, leading, you know? We have all of these really, really funny, different, I mean, so, so different uh, groups. Come in, some are coming into town. Most are from Detroit itself. And then we've got headliner Kate Willett. And, I mean, they're all, like, so funny. She's dark. We've got improv Jane Austen. And they're just, I mean, they do, <laughs> like, old-timey, I could I can't even do improv good speak it normal English. <laughs> and these are like I'm not even gonna try. They're just doing old time you know, it's old timey and it's wow. all about like they dress up like that too, which is I think another level of professionalism to their improv. That sounds really cool. It they're really fun. Uh what bottle, are they? they're from Chicago. They're uh I think their head base is IO theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we had a lot of submissions this year from them, which is really cool. It's, Chicago's only a couple hours away. Yeah. So it's really sweet to just be able to have people who want to drive or even fly in. We've got a few, quite a few out-of-towners mm-hmm. that, I mean, really kick ass. Uh, being on the submissions team this year was uh, something I didn't know going in how it was going to be. And because uh, I don't want to toot my own horn or anything, but... We had started to try and do an organic, like, natural gaining a following on Instagram, Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. posting every day and, like, keeping active. And for whatever, and, you know, the pandemic was ending or whatever. Uh, People are coming, there it is. People are coming out more is the key in all of that. And so just, like, a culmination of the two I mean, we had double the submissions we had from the previous year. And it was really hard to say no to so many talented people. I mean, so many talented people. I am just thankful to be a part of, like, a board. Uh, or not a, I'm not on the board. 
I'm just thankful to be a part of the team that like really is like key involving women in a comedy setting. Yeah. It's been eye-opening to a lot of issues like that women still face you know I'm only one lady in the comedy scene so to hear other people who have issues you know like diversity issues and things like that you you learn you know, so yeah. much about like what's actually happening in your community too yeah that's great mm-hmm. I mean it's sad that you you know are learning these you know that people are still having issues but yeah. it's great that there's places for for them to go exactly so that's great that that's a thing that's happening and it's it's all sorts of things right so it's improv it's stand-up are there there's like filmed there's sketches yep film sketches there's two podcasts are being recorded on saturday there's three workshops and uh we've got three headliner slots as Mm -hmm. well so friday uh there's nine o'clock and Saturday also at nine o'clock on Saturday as well Mm -hmm. we'll have um bottle of red and um Ronnie Chanel on Friday we've got improv Jane Austen and Coco on Saturday and Kate Willett's closing down the independent both nights it's something you can't like this year is gonna be one not to miss yeah I'm gonna well I'm I signed up to volunteer so I'll be there Saturday night Excellent. That's going to be really cool. It's, yeah. I'm glad, I don't know who's volunteering, so I'm glad to kind of hear it. There's another friend of mine, Joe, and uh, they're they're like, I signed up to volunteer, and I was like, yes, at least there are cool people <laughs> volunteering too. Yeah, I, I, um, I really wanted to submit a sketch, but I did not have the time to do it. I had so many other things in the air. So I was like, I'll do this this year so I can help Well, you were also doing Dream Train, too. Yeah. And that was, like, right, I want to say submissions were, like, uh, probably at the beginning of that, too, for you guys. Yeah. Like, I understand. I am lucky we had filmed um, a sketch for So Fucked It's Funny. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's that's at a pro-abortion, like, access uh, fundraiser that's been traveling now. And we had made a short, a micro short, so like mm-hmm. less than two minutes is, I had no idea that was a thing. Uh, but now the video we sent, we submitted to the comedy festival, uh, and we're going to go up this year. And it also is going to go around with So Fucked It's Funny. And I, well, I'm i glad, awesome. honestly, I'm glad we did it, because otherwise I would not have sub- been able to submit anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was directing a show while you guys were directing Dream Train mm-hmm. uh, called Stupor, and it was a zine, live zine kind of reading performance. We ha- I made them all memorize their pieces, and it was a lot of fun. But, I yeah, there was no way I was going to be able to whip a sketch together and submit it to the festival in time. Yeah, yeah. I, I had, like, some sketches that I was like, okay, these could be ready to go, but as far as getting them performed, it was not going to. Oh my god, so, it is it's just hard. Yeah. yeah, and there and now you have time to prepare and I think exactly. I'm going to follow like the same. Some of the video sketches were really good. So I'm and I think they all made them. I think they all made it this year's because we had enough slots to put them in. Yeah. And I think next year's going to be just as silly and fun. Excuse yeah. Me. It'll be cool to like to see what everyone did. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, are you you said Friday or Saturday? Saturday. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um you guys should check it out. Planet Ant is it? It's like all day, right? On uh, Saturday. Yes, it's starting at uh, three o'clock. They've got podcasts going up, and then all the way through ten o'clock, the com- the last awesome. show of the night. That's the nineteen, twenty, and twenty first. And just nineteen and twenty. Oh, just nineteen the twentieth. No, twenty first. Stay home twenty first, or Stay don't, home. or do don't. Something else. You could step by, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And then we got June second is when when women women who drink open. And that's at, was it 7 or 8? That's at 7 o'clock. 7 well. o'clock. 7 o'clock at Planet Ant. 7 o'clock at Planet Plant. I don't know. Um, <laughs> We're doing voices now. Yeah. Uh, so that goes until the, the following weekend, too. Yep. Um, so you have four chances to go check it out. It sounds like, I well, I know it's going to be amazing. Um, I'm going to definitely be at one of those shows, oh, yeah. depending on what my schedule is. And... Um, Oh, well, I want to thank you so much for talking to me. About I mean, really, thank you for having me. I appreciate you being so open to having little old me here. Oh, of course, of course. I, I love doing this, and I love hearing about what everyone's doing. 
um, in their earthly realms and trying to just keep it together. I mean, here in hell, you know, but it gets a little boring, but you know, it it's it sucks way worse on earth. Yeah, so, I know. That long walk back is gonna be really treacherous for me. Yeah. They're gonna those demons wanted me the first time around. Yeah, all you really gotta do is just kinda kick at them a little bit and they Yeah, yeah, they should be fine. <laughs> Thank you, Bamba. Thank you. See you guys next time. <laughs>